Yes. Speaking yes. of technology. Yes. Speaking of technology. Yes. <laughs> well, the question is why? Why is technology important? Why is technology? Why, important? Okay. Yeah. That was what. That's what I was going to. Why is technology? And that, that was really kind of what I was trying to get, get to on on this is why do why do we care about articles that that are really kind of off in the fringe? And mm -hmm. I think the reason we care is because as quality people, we can frame it in a way that actually uh, kind of opens up. Uh, a broader discussion uh, that actually relates to our field, right? Which is kind of like we, why we like when people send us, like Alan sent send us this. So yeah, exactly right. Okay, and well, good. Okay, so okay. Well, I was gonna say I, I, we're getting short on time. I want to get our next guest in. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're gonna talk about uh, things like uh, Industry 4.0 and cyber physical systems and artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning and business intelligence and data science and big data and quality 4.0 wow. and I could go on and on. And these like were buried <laughs> in buzzwords, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many that we tend to tune them out. Maybe if I ignore them, they won't see me, Wait, right? <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I don't know what big data is. I'm just, I'm not even gonna pay attention to it. The thing is, all these terms, all these tech terms do refer to a rel revolution that is occurring in industry right now, today. You can't ignore them. Even though you're inundated by them, you may not know what they mean, you do have to kind of pay attention. You know, uh, how are they, re how are all these items, uh, all these terms related? Uh, how does this technology support quality and process improvements? And, and not just for big companies uh, with big IT staffs, but for companies of all sizes. Uh, the cornerstone to all of this is data. Collecting and storing data is easy, but using it to generate useful insights can be a bit more of a challenge, especially in quality, which often requires substantial expertise in hands-on experience with products and processes. So how do you introduce new technologies to generate insights and create value in your organization in a way that makes sense for your company. That means economic sense as well. As well. So joining us today, we're uh, happy to have Nicole Radziwill, quality practice leader at Intellix, and also a fellow of the American Society for Quality and an editor of Software Quality Professional. She's also the author of the article this week, Your Data Are Your Most Valuable Assets. Nicole, thanks for joining us. Hi, Mike. Hi, Dirk. Hey, how are you, Nicole? Thank, yeah, Great. Th thanks for being with us today. So before we get too far into this, maybe you can just give us a basic definition of terms. So when we say quality 4.0, what, what are we really talking about? Just to frame it properly what for the What the heck audience. is that? Yeah. Okay, I have a really easy conceptual foundation, a really easy way for everybody to remember what quality 4.0 is. And that is connectedness, intelligence, and automation for performance, so CIA, connectedness, intelligence, and automation for performance, that's it. Uh, you know, the practice of quality, it's all about meeting requirements, making things fit for use, making products and processes easier, better, faster, cheaper, like, like Shingo said. Uh, you know, we also do things like reduce costs, reduce risks. Uh, we like to get rid of anything that's bad or unnecessary or, or not value adding. So, you know, that part doesn't change. We still have the same goals and we're still going to have the same goals. We want to collectively in our organizations learn how to do things better and then how to make that happen over and over again. But now with Industry 4.0, we have systems and technologies that can amplify those efforts that can that can bring us breakthrough innovation. So to dive in a little bit deeper into CINA, uh, number one is connectedness. So internet connected devices and people, Google, um, Internet of Things, Industrial IoT. Uh, we've now got ways for people to talk to each other, for people to talk to things and machines, and, and also for the things and machines to talk to each other. Um, in the past, I've called this connectivity, and, and that's true, but what's really important about connectivity, you know, particularly having internet connectivity to people and things, is that it, it brings those people and machines and data sources together. And wearables, uh, implantables, that's kind of scary, but it's also uh, on the research horizon. Um, connected homes, connected offices, smart cities, that's, that's what's coming on ne uh, up next in terms of connectedness. So the second thing is intelligence. Um, using that information that the people and the machines um, produce to make decisions, to reveal insights, to, to uncover the things that are hidden. And that's where artificial intelligence and machine learning come in. Um, you use them for decision support. Uh, you see them implemented in tools like chatbots or recommendation systems or, or even spam filtering. I bet everyone benefits from a spam filter in their email box every day. And you know, it's, it's become commonplace. You, you kind of expect that sort of thing. Um, and also, you guys mentioned genomics. And uh, that's also an important uh, element of this whole puzzle because 
if you think about it, genomics will give us the intelligence that we need to, to better control and refine biological processes. So, so it is really tightly connected to quality. And then the third thing is automation. So most people think of industrial robotics, but also software-based process automation is important. And when you blend automation and intelligence together, um, you, you find that um, things kind of perform better and they, they do things on their own. And, and so uh, it reduces the amount of work, the burden on the, the humans in the processes. So um, with automation, humans are, are being taken out of the loop. And sometimes that's good and sometimes that has some consequences. So, you know, driverless cars, um, even neurotechnology. So this is a really interesting thing. Um, right now, some auto manufacturers are exploring how to monitor the alertness of the drivers uh, to try and make things safer, you know, between now and the time that we do have the, the driverless cars. So that's kind of interesting. The bottom line is, is that quality is all about achieving performance requirements, improving that performance, building capabilities, increasing resilience. These are all of the same goals that we've had forever. Um, I started getting into uh, data science and machine learning that, that has become quality 4.0. Uh, about 15 years ago, we had a, we had a, a task that we had to take care of, um, how to distinguish good data from bad data. And unfortunately, it was impossible for humans to do it manually or to keep up with the data volume on a regular basis. So. You know, we, we coded up some neural networks. It only took uh, about nine months. Uh, now the same thing would take maybe 15 minutes. Um, and we had to run it on a really powerful and really expensive computer. But, you know, times have changed, and that's good for all of us. I mean, we aren't limited by the infrastructure anymore. We have lots of open source software packages out there so that we don't have to spend nine months coding this functionality. So, uh, you know, when I, when I was introduced to these things in the context of, of uh, how you could use it for quality, I saw the value in it, so I kept up with it. I ended up teaching applied machine learning um, in an interdisciplinary applied science program. Did that for about a decade, but now I'm at Intellex. Um, Intellex is a software company. It takes care of the, the bread and butter, the core tasks of, of quality management, and also environment and health and safety. And it, Intellex is committed to innovation and quality, and that's one of the reasons that uh, I'm really excited to, to be on this ride and to be a part of it, because we get to think about you know, how do we make quality 4.0 real for everyone? How, how do we drive value? I, I've heard some people say that quality 4.0 is just a new approach to manufacturing, and that's okay, but I, I don't think it's really new at all. I think it's it's been happening now for about 20 years. Um, what we're seeing now is the convergence of problems. Oh, did we lose it, Nicole? Uh, I think we lost Nicole there for a, for a little bit uh, while we tried to get her uh, while we tried to get her back. Um, she said something I really liked her her quality four point oh. Oh, we got you back. Up, oh, Nicole, do we have you? Can you see me? Yeah, we oh, got yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We had a little freeze there for a, a moment. Hey, oh, no worries. Uh, Nicole, I, I want to uh, jump in here a little bit. Um, I really liked your CIA thing, the connectedness, intelligence, and automation. Easy to remember. Yeah. And I think the connectedness, when, when you said connectedness, my immediate thought was not electronic or, or you know, computer connectedness. I immediately thought people, connectedness, you know, connectedness among, amongst people. And you had said something in your article. You wrote, um, you ask, how can we use emerging technologies to support engagement and collaboration, human things, that help connected and empowered ind individuals achieve the organization's goals? Um, can you, so that's a very human thing. That, that, that's kind of the CIA from a human point. Can you give us an example of how companies maybe are doing that? Uh, yeah, and the, the surprising answer is that they've been doing it for quite a while. We're just now recognizing it under the, the banner uh, of Quality 4.0. We're, we're just now um, starting to, to label these things and, and be able to gather together and, and think about them and, and work on them. Um, but here's an example for you, and this actually comes from the year 2000. I was working on a field service project. It was at a large telecom company. And what we wanted to do was uh, we wanted to solve a, a really simple problem. There were field service reps. They would go out to repair a line, and the, the company wanted to figure out a way for them to get rid of their clipboards, right? And, you know, the reason why this problem was, was big is that 
Um, sometimes when, when the field service techs would go out to do the repairs, um, they wouldn't keep a record of what they did. Um, sometimes they would have a record, but the, you know, maybe they'd spill coffee on their clipboard and so they'd get it back to the office and you couldn't read what they reported. Uh, other times the data would just never make it back to a centralized system. So you know, business people couldn't use it to make the business run better. And so we implemented a, a field service automation project, which is, is kind of funny now because it, it incorporated custom engineered hardware devices. And you, know, you wouldn't do that now. You just have people use these apps from their phones. But what it boils down to is if it's easier for you to get the information that will help you perform your job well, you're more likely to be engaged. If you know how to contribute to the performance of your organization, if you can be recognized for doing that, um, you're more likely to engage and collaborate. And so the kinds of things you'll see out in the wild helping us craft more efficient and effective operations are, are gonna be things like mobile applications and the convergence of mobile and desktop and phone, all the customer touch points, um, things like chat bots or the, the Twitter customer service bots, which are, are really interesting because um, sometimes you don't realize they're not people until you talk to them for a while. And where it's gonna get really interesting is when we can handle the feedback loops, the feedback loops, you know, when the, the, the people, the stakeholders, our customers, when everyone is engaged and that we can use their interactions to help improve the performance of the system and meet everyone's needs more effectively. Um, well, thanks, Nicole. I mean, that's a, two very, really, uh, really good answers to the, both, both of those questions. I pre appreciate the depth that you went in on to uh, those. And I should say that uh, there is a webinar coming up. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in this topic, uh, you might um, uh, like to know that we're bringing you a webinar next week titled The Quality 4.0 Revolution, which you already know a lot more about right now. Uh, Reveal Hidden Insights now with data science and machine learning. And Nicole uh, here is going to be your presenter and I'll be your host. So check that out. Uh, the event is this coming Tuesday, October 16th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And there's a link to register in Nicole's article right at the very bottom there, I think before the references. Uh, there's a link out to the, uh, out to the registration page. Mm -hmm. And you can tell from watching Nicole right now uh, that she is passionate about this and mm -hmm. also very knowledgeable. So be sure that you uh, check out that uh, check out that webinar because it actually it applies to everybody very very often sometimes our, our webinars are very specific to you mm -hmm. know maybe ISO 9001 or lean or Six Sigma quality 4.0 really spans pretty much everything related to what you're doing in your company so this really is a broad I think something that's a little bit more broad based uh, you don't have to be, be technically oriented to understand it I don't believe Nicole right that's correct, yeah. That's right. So anybody can watch this. So, uh, Nicole, thanks for joining us this morning. And uh, we will, uh, well, we'll meet up with you on Tuesday. Thank you. See you then. Okay. Thanks, thanks Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. Have a great weekend. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Re register for that one now. If you haven't already, uh, you can register, as Dirk said, in, in the article or look out for your email inbox. We'll have an invite for you coming soon next week.